Hey everybody, it's Robert County. It's with the Chatham County Public Information Office, and I want to thank you again for tuning into this edition of the chat. This is our final edition of the chat for this year, 2023. And I thought by having us wrap a bow on this year, I'd want to talk to our next guest. And he is Chatham County Police Chief Jeff Hadley. Chief. Good to see you. Good to see you, Robert. Thanks and, for having me. And thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Absolutely. So I thought it would be a good idea to look back at the year that was mm -hmm. um, and then look forward to some of the initiatives that you, you as a department really want to attain. Mm -hmm. So let's first start with looking back. You know, what are some of the accomplishments um, that you as a department have attained and has impacted the community? You know, the, the biggest um, accomplishment that, that really sticks out to me is the establishment of our behavioral health unit. Yes. Um, and, uh, which coupled with that is our homeless liaison um, sergeant. So those special populations is how, you know, I like to, you know, to some extent describe them. You know, we're able to be much more intentional around how we serve them. Um, have a more broader picture view of, you know, getting them services and getting them, you know, in a different place as opposed to just incarcerating people. Um, that's what law enforcement has done for years. So um, that first and foremost is what sticks out to me the most. Um, in addition, we have our canine unit. So we mm -hmm. were able to get uh, two canines up and running. And uh, it's not as simple as just buying a dog and giving them to a person, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot more that goes into that. So um, those those um, the establishment of those those units have, I think really sticks out to me in 2023 how's the community engagement I know you guys are really active mm -hmm. you know whether it be shop with a cop or mm -hmm. whether it be coffee with with a mm -hmm. cop how, how are those going and what's your feedback then um, to be completely honest we I don't think we've done as well as we could have could have done quite frankly um, when we had our staffing levels at a at a, uh, a certain point where we could we had two dedicated neighborhood liaison officers that mm -hmm. really acted as the conduit between us and the the neighborhoods throughout East and West Chatham, um, those um, officers ended up uh, leaving the department, going to you know federal law enforcement, and mm -hmm. you know we're, we're very pleased with them. But because our staffing numbers dipped so low that we were a weren't able to dedicate. Um, an individual person to that. So mm -hmm. some of those programmatic things that happen or are facilitated through the neighborhood liaison officers um, um, aren't as plentiful as they used to be. Um, I know I know we were, uh, we're sponsoring 16 Christmas families this year and we do some other things throughout the year. Uh, we partner a lot with Chatham County Sheriff's Office. Uh, mm -hmm. They do a wonderful job at community engagement and so they're always uh, inviting us to kind of piggyback on, on what they're doing. Um, whether it be um, trunk or treat, um, we had a book bag giveaway right. um, that we did out on Chevis Road. So uh, we're still, you know, involved in, in those activities and connecting with the community, not to the extent that, that I would like, quite mm -hmm. frankly, or that is needed, uh, but that's just kind of the situation we're in. Let's shift gears a little bit, Chief, and look, look at and dig down deep into some of the numbers that you mm -hmm. as a department are facing. Mm -hmm. um, Violent crime is up, but 17 and a half, 17.4 percent. But I would argue that it's violent crime is up nationwide. It is. Um, it's, it's certainly tracked that way um, aggregately. You know, obviously not every community has has those elevations, but um, we're kind of you know normalized in that in that regard. Uh, you know, by comparison, you know, really 85 percent of our crime is property crime. Right, but that's down 12 and a half That is down, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at overall crime, we're down. Right. Violent crime, we're up. If you look at our categories, um, aggravated assault, non-domestic mm -hmm. uh, with a weapon is our most elevated category um, so far in 2023. Um, and trying to understand, is there a pattern? Is there a theme relative to that? You know, road rage is one that sticks out hmm. uh, to us. Many people, you know, driving down the road, someone cuts them off. You know, it seems lately they, they want to pull a gun out and flash it. Well, that's an aggravated assault if someone feels threatened. Um, so, you know, we have to count that as an aggravated assault. That doesn't mean they fired a weapon at them or anything like that. But for whatever reason, people, you know, uh, you know, go to that. That's their go-to mm -hmm. or can be their go-to uh, in, in a situation like that. But um, overall, I, I think we're managing uh, to the extent that we can with our, uh, um, our staffing issues and, you know, our staffing issues 
aren't just on the streets, they're also in our criminal investigations division. So they're, you know, they work really hard, they do a great job. Um, and when they get a case, you know, a big case, you know, it's very involved with, with the uh, uh, trying to obtain warrants, uh, cell phones, downloading cell phones, and, and trying to analyze all the, the mm -hmm. information that comes from those. That takes time, energy, and effort, and uh, they put a lot into that. But that also takes away from some other cases as well. So, um, part one crime down 8.6 percent, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So that's trending in the positive direction. Correct. I always like to attribute it. That's that's eight point whatever the percentage is, eight mm -hmm. percent less victims, right? So, right. If you have two thousand crimes a year, and eight percent of two thousand crimes is what eighty, right? Uh, um, that's 80 less people that were victimized in, in unincorporated Chatham County, and that's a good day. Right. Um, looking at some of the beats that you guys have, you know, seven, eight, and nine mm -hmm. still remain pretty active. Sure. And what do you attribute that to? The growth. I mean, if you, I mean, come on, West Chatham, uh, West Savannah, West, mm -hmm. however you want to, West Garden City, West Pooler. Right. Uh, all of these jurisdictions are growing exponentially with uh, with obviously the ports being as active as they are, the Hyundai plant, you know, new housing, uh, new businesses, strip malls and restaurants and, and, and all that comes along with grow, growth and more population. I mean, you're going to have obviously more incidents. And so, um, you know, it's funny because when I moved here and I moved, I moved uh, on the east side, I moved I live on Tybee, but everyone was like, oh, the traffic, the traffic, the traffic. I think our traffic's a lot less than, <laughs> than West Chatham because as I'm going home, right, yeah. and I get off Chatham Parkway and I go down 16 to go through downtown, and I can catch uh, 16 and go into downtown with no problem. Right. And I look at by 3 o'clock, and it's backed up. It's horrible. Um, yeah. All the way uh, almost to, to downtown. Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, you know, just the growth out on West Chatham, uh, West Chatham, West Savannah, um, is certainly a, you know, I would point to it as attributed to the to the, the, the increase in incidents. Do you are you still seeing, Chief, a problem with stolen weapons, unlocked vehicles, or are you making gains in that area? We we still do. We're down from last year, which it, is good. It is. If you looked at our five-year trend, it kind of goes like this. Yeah. Um, but it is down. I think we've had like 54 this year, whereas last year we had above 70. Uh, maybe close to 80. So, I mean, we might be down 15, 20%. That's still a problem. It, yeah. It's still a problem. Um, but uh, it's certainly trending in the right direction right now. And I don't want to throw you a curve, but it's just, in, it's just interesting to me. Of the weapons that are stolen, and you don't have to be specific, but is there a large percentage of the weapons that are stolen that show up in crimes that are committed? Or is it just somebody just wanting to add to a collection? <laughs> I think by the time we find out, well, let me, let me back up. By the time if a weapon is stolen and it's used in a crime, it may be used in 50 crimes before we ever find it that's used in one. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. It, may be, it may end up in a drug raid. It may end up, you know, someone has it in their car that they end up getting arrested. And it, it could have been passed around four or five different times amongst, really? you know, people that know each other. Mm -hmm. um, so it does happen. Um, I just don't know if we're able to pinpoint it to the extent that it, it actually does happen. But you got to think of it in these terms. If someone, forgive the term, is a criminal mm -hmm. and they, they broke into a car to steal and they stole a gun, they're probably going to use that gun to commit more crimes right? Um, or pass it along to someone that, that, that may. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, locking your car isn't hard. It's hard to get into the new, the new cars. You know, it really is. And rarely do we have someone break a window to get into a car. Not that it never happens, mm -hmm. but it's pretty rare. So it's really unlocked cars that they're just, it's easy targets. 99%. Yeah. You mentioned a little bit before about staffing issues. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like every time we talk, <laughs> you're battling this, you know, this war. Mm -hmm. um, you do have some folks that are in the academy? We do. And what, are, wh what gains, if any, have you made as a department What's the status of your staffing right now? Yeah, I wouldn't say we've made any gains. Mm -hmm. We've just stayed kind of uh, at around a 20% vacancy rate, give or take. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had some people trickle out, um, people trickle in. Uh, we haven't lowered our standards. We're not. We're not mm -hmm. going to do that. Um, you know, we're still getting applications, but you know, by and large, um, by the time that applic applicant pool gets through the process, you might have a you know, a 5% success rate um, because yeah. it's very involved and we want to make sure that 
Um, we're hiring the right people with the right character that we do our due diligence. I mean, you know, we're putting guns in people's hands uh, and right. um, they're making critical decisions uh, on a moment's notice in the middle of the night. So, you know, we want to make sure we uh, have the best that we can get um, and put them out there for the, for the citizens. So we'll, I'll ride light, you know, uh, as opposed to, you know, hiring people that I'd just be iffy on. I just, I just, I wouldn't want to put them in that position. And I'm certainly not putting the community in that position or our current officers in that position. Exactly. I was just going to say, or their partners yep, or absolutely. people on, you know, they're working with. You're, you're, on, you're in a profession where you have to focus on quality and not quantity. Absolutely. And, you know, it's a quality person that makes a good officer. I don't know your business. I would just assume so yeah. that that's the case. Um, you mean, know, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, we're not going to bat a thousand. You know, right. hopefully through our uh, field training process, um, through the academy mm -hmm. and all that, that we're able to kind of identify red flags and, and perhaps um, if we have to dismiss someone for whatever reason, performance, uh, character, whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's rarely character. It's usually.